Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 83. Nasdaq's up 15. S&P's are up five and a half. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Jason Path, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. Jason, what's going on, brother? Not much, Tom. How are you, man? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So, uh, you know, we get quite a market, no doubt. Uh, we had gas numbers this morning. So uh, what are we thinking here? Yeah, so I've been watching gas closely. You know, the interesting thing about natural gas right now is, in some ways, certainly from a production standpoint, it's linked with oil, right? A lot of companies drill with both, drill for both. You have a lot of what they call associated gas. About 10 to 12 percent of the natural gas we extract is really comes from drilling for oil. I and see. Again, a lot of a lot of wells, you know, are, are both gas and liquids. So as as rigs come off the field, as these oil, primarily EMP companies, get hit as hard as they're getting hit, and we really see natural gas production going down. Clearly, the demand is is, is the variable everybody's watching closely. Um, but, you know, we all get the story in oil, right? We're not flying, we're not driving, but we're still, you know, heating and cooling our houses. We're still using electri electricity. So, yeah. Uh, it's so deep, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah, what I, exactly. We've been in a long-term downtrend, you know, gas markets. You know, once upon a time, we're very volatile and swung wildly. It's been, you know, kind of a grind downward over the last year or two, but um, I really feel like gas got hit harder than it should have a few weeks back when oil started to get hit. Yeah. People taking rigs out of the field. Um, we're going to see production really fall off a cliff. And again, we're still going to heat and cool our homes. Clearly, demand will incrementally go back up in gas as we as we reopen the country. But you know, the, I think the consensus this morning was for 47, 48 BCF on an injection. We did 43. I think it's going to continue to be a little more bullish on the storage numbers that people are expecting because I think they've overfactored for um, you know a loss of demand. And I, I think as as we move forward, as the country reopens, we incrementally use more gas. Um, you know, because, you know, we're at like 155, 156 on futures, which is, is getting pretty close to, you know, multi-decade lows. I know. You I know, it, 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 there's ahead. no doubt that it's amazing. I said to Tommy this morning, it's so deviant, man, right, that, you know, it's been so low, folks, okay? And then you right. think that, okay, it only can go so low. I mean, a man used to Ed Young years ago, he said, well, the best cure for low prices is low prices, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and and what, what happens in... What happens in gas is you have you have what they call gas switching or coal switching, where when the price gets that low, the price of coal has really gone up dramatically over the last couple of years. Plants, many plants are able to switch, and so when you get down to 155, 160, folks switch over to gas. What we've seen during the downturn, we've yes. seen electricity demand drop about 10 percent across the country, but plants are burning more gas because they're switching over from coal, and we've seen gas as a percent of mix move from 35 percent to 40 percent across the country. Wow. And so we're actually burning about as much gas as we did before the downturn. Um, so I think that's net bullish for gas. And uh, I think it's going to, it's certainly going to be an interesting spring and summer in the energy world. But as, as these companies continue to get hit, CapEx gets hit, rigs come off the field. You know, we're down about half from this time last year on rigs. Um, I think it's net bullish for gas long term. Hey, so let me ask you, right, you know, on the notes that you sent over, and this is really intriguing, folks, okay, because uh, uranium, and, and I'm looking, you know, as soon as you sent it over this morning, right, I'm looking at Cameco, right? Kimiko, That's right. Cameco's an ABC up. I mean, so talk to me about uranium. What's the, what's the deal why this thing is running, man? So you want to talk about companies that just could never figure out how to make money historically, right? So uranium companies, they overmined, they, they could just never figure it out. And then countries honestly started using old nuclear waste piles to, to get supply. And, you know, across the, across the world, right, globally, about 25% of our power is uh, supplied by nuclear. And what you had last year, uh, Kamiko and others really got together almost cartel-like and decided to really cut supply and I improve see. margins. And they did it. Um, and again, be up below the radar. Everybody's worried about oil and gas, the energy yeah. sector, and, and Kamiko's really led the way on cutting back in production with the stated goal of lifting price. And you can see it's just been <laughs> exploding topside. We we expected that um, given given Kamiko and other statements, and um, it's it's just played out, and it's continued to go up and up and up. It's a beautiful setup, man. And if you it's Kamiko, folks, the the uh, symbol is CCJ, uh, and you know. Check it out. It's an ABC up. It took the B point out today. That B point is $9.80, and it already just went up from $5 in a month. So, 
Big number. So, uh, we're going to switch over. Let's talk the euro. So, talk to me about the euro. Actually, can, you know what I want to do? Can we talk? I yeah. want to talk about this. Um, no, let's do the euro first. Then we'll go into the bonds, all right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, it, clearly we're all at home, you know, worried about the virus, but there's, there's a lot of geopolitical risk and a lot of things happening across the world. You know, and right now in Europe, you know, you've got 100,000 people dead around the world with the virus. You've got um, Europe is in the midst of the greatest recession that they've ever faced, and they just cannot get on the same page as to how to deal with it. Right. Um, you've still got risk in the Middle East. You've got, you know, Italy versus Norway there on the continent. Um, and I, I think all of that, we saw, you know, the, the uh, uh, product manufacturing numbers come out of Europe, you know, 13.1 or something, just all-time lows, yeah. the, the economic data that's printing. I think it's very net bearish for the euro. Uh, and, and one of the ideas that we're, you know, expressing in some new trades is, you know, short euro yen, for instance. Uh, you know, with Kim Jong-un, who knows what's happening over there in North Korea, you know, the yen's a safe haven. Yeah. Enough, a lot of geopolitical risks, certainly some on the continent with the euro. You know, they're meeting this week and today really trying to hammer out a $2.2 trillion uh, deal. And I just don't think it's going to happen. So if folks are looking for a way to divest a little exposure away from the dollar, still go long geopolitical risk short the euro, I think you're, you're again short for the next couple months. Is we have nice. Play. There's just there's too much risk in the world right now aside from the virus. Um, and the European leaders just can't get on the stage. Yeah, we're a lot lucky. I mean, this, you know, we have all the states. It's one, you know, federal government versus what they have going on. There's no doubt. That's right. So, yeah, in, and Italy and Spain were in trouble going in, right? Yeah. And it's just exactly Big right. time. So when we talk bonds, can we talk, first talk, tell me about this gold-copper ratio, okay? Right. Yeah, so one of the models we use is uh, the gold-copper, copper-gold ratio. And just think in terms of a simple ratio, you know, the price of copper over the price of gold. Yeah. It's a way to mathematize, right, macro, large macro cycles. And if the price of copper is going up, that's typically bullish. Um, you know, gold certainly a safe haven. And what we've seen over the last, you know, 10, 20 years is it's a very good proxy for tracking um, anticipated movements in the 10-year yield. Again, also kind of a benchmark safe haven type play proxy for risk in the macro environment. So what we've seen lately is, you know, I certainly expect to uh, copper to continue to, to break higher, um, is there's been a break, right? Yields have come way in. The gold copper ratio hasn't broken down nearly as much. So I'm telling you one of two things, either, you know, copper's going to fall off a cliff or yields have to come back out a little bit and uh, you know, the price of treasuries has to come down. Right. I think that's what's going to happen. We've seen that historically with that ratio. Whenever it gets back out of whack, the yields come up to meet where the price of copper is as you chart that over a longer time horizon. That's so cool, man, because I think one of the biggest questions that we'll be asking each other, all of us in the, in the investment world, is that what's going to happen with the yields and is there inflation coming in, right? I mean, it's, you know, That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty... I think they have to go out uh, from where, you know, where they are today. You look at the 10-year today. I mean, it, it, they'll drift high, They'll drift out. You know, will we see three again this decade? I, I can't say that. But, right, right. You know, from six-tenths of a percent on the 10-year, I, I think it's pretty safe to say, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be in a much higher yield world in the next few months. Awesome. Awesome information, man. Really appreciate the uh, education, Jason. Yeah, Tom. Appreciate it, man. Have a great rest of the great day. Great one. Safe one. We look forward to speaking hey, you too, next man. week. Okay, man. I can't wait. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Tom. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow. Dow up 92. NASDAQ up 15. S&P's up 6.5. Coming right back. Yeah.